But then the, the fans down here, they're not as loyal as as the Knicks fans. I mean, the still Knicks in there. The Knicks fans and whatever we were building in, in, you know, what we were building in Brooklyn. Yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of, a Knicks game here, forget about it. It's, it's, it's Mostly Knicks fans, 85% yeah. 85% Knicks fans, 15% Heat. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's going to be all Knicks fans. But yeah. now with the, with the Nets, have, they haven't come down here yet. I'm going to go in March when they come to see the difference. But last year when they came, because they only come once or twice. They are, they're supposed to come twice, but they only come in once, once a year. Last year when they came, they came down when, um, I think it was in March, right before the playoffs, right before the playoffs. And that was a, let me tell you, it was a good amount. So this year it may change with the whole KD and the Kyrie, even though, even though they're not playing. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot more this year. And going forward, obviously. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, Florida is an, it's it's a small big city. It's not a you know a big. It's not a it's, the population isn't that crazy, and their history is not that long. You know, a lot a lot of the Cubans that are down there are like second and third generation now. So yeah. you know, you're talking about uh, 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 a population that just was started, you know, forming in the 1960s. Whereas right. you have you have folks up here who's who've been in their area since the nineteen like my family we've been in Brooklyn since the nineteen thirties, and uh, yeah. and the Haitian side of my family um, has been here since the nineteen seventies. So it's 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 different, but um, but uh, regardless, they 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 they're building a fan base, and we're building one in Brooklyn too. In uh, Brooklyn, yeah, yeah. So tell me, man, the last couple games, I've. I didn't want to just get on and, and and get down on them about the Toronto Raptor game. That that was a game that was theirs. It was theirs to win, and I was afraid that uh, this game and and it's and it's you know they played them without Embiid. I think Embiid would have pulled them closer, but. Uh, the Sixers is one of those teams that they look like they come into in, into New York City, and they're not even for, you know focused. Simmons is just wait, can't wait for the game to be over to go you know to the meatpacking district and hang out with Kylie Jenner, and the rest of the team <laughs> just seem like they're going through the motions. And the Nets just whooped up on them. I, I don't know. Should, how, how do you feel about the last two games? Give me a, give me your overarching viewpoint on the Nets. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick it. Back maybe to the to the Hornet game first, and then I'm gonna go, slip into the the Raptor game. And okay. The Raptor game, I, I saw it on, on my phone because I was out shopping, Christmas shopping yesterday. Yeah. So I'm gonna give you a, give you a little bit, of, a little bit of something. I'm gonna give you too much of that one. But the Hornet game, that one pissed me off because that one, you're up twenty, and it, it looks like they, they they took their foot off the pedal. Is mm-hmm. what happened. Yeah. They got up that they took a little bit, and, and dude, you can't do that in the NBA. Especially when you have when you have a kid like 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 Devontae Graham on there, who can get hot at any moment. By the way, he came out of nowhere. I mean, what was he like? I don't think he was even drafted. Was he drafted? No, uh, yeah, he was. He's um, he's from last year. Let me pull yeah, up all his information. He, but he, no wonder, no wonder they let Kimba go like that. But that's just the point. No, I I don't think they knew. They listen sometimes. Teams and drafting and everything like that, <laughs> they get lucky with some certain players. But yeah, you know, he's well, he's from Kansas. You know, um, uh, he was drafted. Uh, uh, he was drafted last year, twenty eighteen NBA draft. Uh, in the second round, fourth pick, 34th overall. Got it. Okay. Okay. So okay. He, he didn't come out of yeah. nowhere. But, you know, you can't you, you can't take it for a step, but you got to keep going. In the NBA, they're always going to make runs. The, the NBA is a game of runs. So you got you to keep your foot on the pedal all the time. Now, I, can I, into, can huh? I, I just want to, I just want to say something about that. Um, I think that the next problem is that, they they're too it's, and it's and when I say one dimensional I don't mean that they could only do one thing it's not like I'm saying all they could do is shoot threes or all they could do is dribble drive 
I'm just saying that teams know that they shoot threes and dribble drive. Every now and then, you just need a little bit of size or you need some players that can actually put the ball on the floor and just out-athlete you, you know, or just out, just overpower you and score. And the Nets don't have those players. And you see it where where Torian Prince is often caught in the middle and that's where his game falls apart because he can he can legitimately shoot. Like his his shooting ability is is can match anyone. But he's easy to defend because he can't drive to the basket to save his life. And I think right. there's spurts in games where you just need a, like where t- defenses are good enough and they know the Nets now, they know that the Nets aren't trying to do certain things and that they can't do certain things. So teams are able to load up and take things away from the Nets and the Nets have to find ways to, um, you know, counteract that. The uh, yeah. And that's, and that's what I saw in the Hornets game. It's they, they, it, it, it like, People give it to Graham because he scored and, and and he put on a bit of a show, but it, it was just driving to the basket. And, and what was happening was Jared Allen was is always is defending everyone in the paint. It's almost like they're always in a zone where Jared Allen isn't just defending his man. He has to defend the entire rim. So whoever dribble drives to the basket... He has to leave, make a decision to either leave his man and defend that person, and he's always getting there just a touch late, late yeah. and it and it puts yeah. him out of position. So I I think that for long stretches, guys will uh, find a way to to score on the nets, drive into the basket in the mid range, um, and then on top of it, the nets have no counter when 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 what they do stops working, it's it's like it's over for them. And, and that's, and that's, you know, frustrating to watch because when they're clicking, they look like they did tonight. Yeah, it does. Like they look like it looked today. Let me tell you. But then the, the, the Raptor game, Mm -hmm. I, like I said, I didn't watch it. So I'm, I I can't get too much, but today they were saying, Ryan Ruka, Ryan Ruka was saying, and Sarah was saying that, uh, Joe Harris and, and Temple, who has, Mm -hmm. I've been great for us. I like I like Temple what he brings to the team. Temple, they went three for thirty for thirty. It wasn't from three. Let me take a look. About five for thirty-five. I think it was or something like that. Yeah, Temple's shooting has been abysmal. I, it, <laughs> he he has. I think that's what it was. He's cold blooded. He has no conscience because he. I think he missed uh, fourteen shots yesterday. Today, I think it was like ten straight three, something like that. They said. <laughs> yeah, today, I mean, yeah. I mean, he's a, he doesn't he doesn't do anything that doesn't surprise me. He's a journeyman. Yeah, he, of course. Yeah, you know, well, like his record says it all. I mean, he, he played in Israel. He played for the for the for Memphis. <laughs> he played for he played for us now. I think he played for like 10, 10 NBA teams. I think it was that they said. Was I, it ten NBA teams. I think I I think and I and and. I, I hate counting, but I think he's played for in ten years. He's played for eight teams, but eight he's teams played. Like he's yeah. changed teams ten times because they out of the eight teams, he's been to some teams twice. He's been to two teams twice. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean it's just, he is a friendly man. It says it all right there. Yeah, so, but yeah, I mean. Yeah, when you go, when you go, whatever it was, I think it was ten for 30, whatever it was, a, a five for thirty from three. I mean, it, it, like you said, a game is predicated around the three point shot. Yeah. Three point shot, and the dribble drive. And if, if you're not hitting a three point shot, I mean, come on, you, you're not going to win. Now, the fact that they only lost by eight, you know, it, 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 it is what it is. But yeah, I mean, a few of those, a few of those would drop, then it'll be a different story. But still, if you're not hitting your shot, then you're not going to win. And then today, you see the difference. Today, they were hitting. And let me tell you, man, I know you want to talk about Wilson Chandler. Mm. He comes in. He, the, now, we have we have more size. We are more, the team is more more deep. You can see 
once you add KD and Kyrie to this team, when they're healthy, he, this team is going to be deep. Remember we talked about that. See, I, I, I don't like playing these games with myself. <laughs> like when we have KD and, and, and Kyrie, but, I. But they're on the, the contract. You know they're coming in regardless. Yeah. So you, 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 I understand what you're saying. Yeah, you but see, see me, I look at it this way. We have KD and Kyrie. What, true. But what I care about is the results. If you're going right. to win 42 games, right, I'm not going to be happy because we won 42 games last year. <laughs> right. And, no, of course not. And and yeah, you know the sun will come out tomorrow. I get it, um, but I I I don't care about next year until next year. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. I, I listen, Kyrie, incredible. I I you know you know how much of a fan of um uh you know D'Angelo Russell I am, but yeah. just watching Kyrie play, I'm like, okay, that's a different level player right there. And maybe maybe D'Angelo may get there one day, but. He's not on Kyrie's level, God damn. And so, and I'm and I'm looking at KD's eyes on the on the court. I'm looking at KD's eyes as he's watching Kyrie play, and he's saying, "Oh my God!" Like he's calculating in his mind, "Oh my God, we're gonna be a problem. They're just mm-hmm. not gonna be able to stop us." And and you know what? To a certain degree, he's right. But the problem is, this is an incomplete team. This team would, you know, what I see when I see them play so well, like how they played tonight. I say yeah. to myself, if they just could get the four position right, this is a team right. that's going to challenge for a championship. And and Ray, for me, at the end of the day, I want to win a championship. I, I think he's. I, I mean, I don't. I don't. You know, I, I didn't say anything. I, I, we'll, we'll do the podcast next year, and then we'll. Yeah, let's. That's you know what I'm saying. I don't want to tease myself with Katie. Let's let's talk yeah. about what we have now. How yeah. did you like Chandler's effect on the game tonight? Uh, he brings size. He brings size. He brings that 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 um, stretch four that we need. I was going to score two points today. I think yeah, two points is what he scored today, mm-hmm. but. You can see, you can see he misses right now. Another thing is, let me let me let me ask you a question because I haven't brought, brought this up to you yet. In, in what do you think about what uh, the Andre has done to, for Jared Allen? His confidence, the way the way he's playing. You you know Jared Allen is a double double team. You know one. You know uh, that's my that's my youngest. Well, no, that's my middle son, Jared Allen. Yeah. I when, I, when, when we talked about when you wanted Capella, remember? Yeah, I listen. I I've always said I wanted I wanted Capella, but even ever since last year, I've been saying, yeah. you know, Jared Allen is yeah. is going to be Capella. Like I was willing to wait, mm-hmm. and I'm because it's always to me it's always about it's not about what the kid is doing right now. It's like okay, if I hold on to this player and I put the resources into making this player good. <laughs> How good can this player be for me? And that's and that's the way Sean Marks thinks of of things, and and that's why Jared Allen is 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 like I don't I don't believe in if if it was if it was DeAndre Jordan or if it was um, uh, Ed OG from last year Ed Davis, uh, right. Jared Allen is is going to get bigger and stronger. Science, nature. <laughs> You know what I the how big I was at twenty one. You know I always try to make that comparison, even though there's no comparison to a, a a in his prime athlete like Jared Allen. But regardless, when I was twenty one years old, I was one hundred eighty five pounds. Now, if right. I ever was one hundred eighty five pounds, all of you would think, oh, he got the monster. He gonna die. There's something wrong with this dude. Right, like right, right, right. I would look crazy at 185 pounds. So the size that Jared Allen is right now is not. It doesn't matter to the big picture. When Jared Allen is 24 and heading into his prom, not even in his prom, heading into his prom, he's going mm-hmm. to be a problem. 
he's going to yeah. be 20 and 10 in, in, in